Welcome back to the Barefoot Forge. In this chapter of we bought this car in Poland, we're gonna strap a bunch of accessories to it that make it look way cooler and more off-roady. We're gonna put it on giant mud terrain tires that are noticeably louder than the previous tires. We're gonna raise the suspension up and in the process find out that the stock suspension was completely ruined. We'll discover some melted wires that keep me up at night. We'll find that the cooling system was mostly full of mud and that all of the oil is coming out of the engine. So join us, because I think we've got problems. Okay. We've got a whole lot of parts to put on. Blech, over there. Look at them all. Let's put them on. Let's do this. This is gonna be fun. We've partnered up with our friends over at Go Westy Camper Products. They're a specialty shop bringing all kinds of innovations to the VW Vanigan world. And uh, we've got some cool products to make this thing quite a bit beefier and way more trucky. It's gonna be cool. Let's do it. This rear view mirror is in horrible shape and it's like a kaleidoscope. So we got a new one. Well, we got a used one from a guy in Vermont. Let's put it on. One thing I make sure I put in every bus is some form of communication. This bus is gonna be a support vehicle on a lot of our wild VW bus adventures. So it needs a GMRS radio. We're installing this one from Midland. This is the MXT 275. It's 15 watts. Um, so it's a little less powerful than the 575 that I have in the blue bus, but it has the same awesome hand controls. So everything's right there on the unit. And we're gonna be able to mount this sort of covertly behind the dash. And uh, it's pretty good. We're gonna also put a big giant whip antenna on this one because it's gonna look cool. It's gonna look real right. cool. Well, there it is. That's the Go Westy Ashtray Elimination Kit with a ram mount ball on it. Uh, what this is, outlet with the pigtail for the GMRS Midland radio and two charger ports. And this has a voltmeter in between so you can tell if your alternator's not alternating. So we'll put this in, wire it all in and uh, Add a radio. Yeah, I fished the fish wire through there, so we'll stick our antenna cable down. Oh, we'll just do some bending. We're going to need a hammer. We're going to need a hammer. Don't forget, this guy comes off. So for sticking it through grommets and things, it's going to be way, 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 way easier if you're just dealing with that guy. I'm replacing the hard start uh, timey levery device um cable there's on um, these diesels there's a cable up front you pull a little lever and it makes the car start early or easier by advancing the timing or negating the timing or i don't know it does things to the timing of the engine anyway uh mine was missing the handle and stuff and so i got a new one and i'm feeding it all through turns out it wasn't really missing the handle they uh they just you know stick welded a washer on there i well i was connecting it and the whole lever fell off the pump which makes no sense because this pump has just been rebuilt twice and now the pump has to come out to put the lever back on, which means retiming the engine. Oh, I took this on a great adventure yesterday. Drove about 50 miles. Did pretty good, honestly. But our buddy who was in the chase vehicle behind us said that, uh, you know, the, a lot of smoke coming out. And he said the smoke smelled of death. He said, I'm poisoning the general public and it was getting into the cab of his vehicle. So, you know, we might have to address that a little bit. It probably needs piston rings, but luckily it needs other major things too. There's major ca catastrophic problems with this engine. Most notably, it seems to be leaking oil as well as burning it. So uh, we got to come up with a solution to that. I got one of these uh, kits off the Amazons there that uh, allowed me to put some dye in the oil and get some of these sunshine glasses like the cool kids that do the sporting clays and a little LED light that shows me where the leaks are and it seems to be a leak between the head and the actual block so that's pretty bad so uh we could take it all apart and fix it put new rings in rebuild the whole engine i think we're going to start by putting chemicals into the oil and see if that you know seals everything up or ruins everything so let's go buy some chemicals i bought some of this bars leak because it says that it is good for uh if your vehicle is a good candidate for this solution if it does not consume more than one quart of oil per day that's a lot so yeah let's put this stuff in it's my first time running it through a car wash this feels like a bad idea let's see what gets torn off or destroyed oh yeah this feels like damage this feels like a real bad idea I am working hard on replacing the locks so that the treasure chests work. I got these out of Poland, new old stock, real nice. 
But this guy, this guy is completely filled with sand and it doesn't move at all. So I can't open this door. I did get the other door done. So uh, what I'm going to do is climb through the treasure chest and take the lock off the door. I think that'll okay. work. I'm inside the belly of the beast doing the locks. I don't really know. How, this today got weird to fix the locks on the doka. I needed to climb into the middle of it. Also, I can climb into the middle. I'm just taking these bolts out and literally popping the lock off the door from the inside. Like a really horrible burglar. I guess we just get to grind this off with our new Milwaukee little Dynafile thing. I don't know. Let's make it go away. This tool right here is super awesome. I just got this. This is a Milwaukee M12 fuel Dynafile. It's a new product. I'll put a link somewhere. This thing is sweet. It does a thing that none of my other tools do. And it was able to grind this off without damaging anything else. That tool is sweet. You need one. You should buy one. You've earned one. You deserve it. Maybe get two. I am replacing this new fuel line with one without this Amazon bulb in it and putting some clear line on this side too because I think my smoke is caused by fuel. I think there's still something wrong with the injection pump. And by having clear fuel lines, if we have no bubbles coming in and no bubbles coming out, we don't have we can isolate this to not be the problem. So time to get into the cooling system. I'm replacing bottles that look like this that have thick mud on top because they have thicker mud on the inside. Let me show you what comes out of it. This bottle is disgusting. That's my coolant. Uh, flush the system. I just shoved a garden hose in this one. And I'll turn it on and see what it does. Oh, it's coming out everywhere. It's gone rogue. Got it. Okay. Blowing. Look at that. Getting some much cleaner looking water coming out. That's kind of what I expected to see. See this steel inner bit has come out of the plastic outer bit. So we're gonna just poke it back in and hope it never moves again. Um, but it will because there's supposed to be a lip here on this side and it's it's missing. It's probably in here. Yeah, it's in there. So everything's ruined. Um, they sell these as stainless steel, but they're very expensive. So we're gonna not go with that option because this car is a piece of crap. But we'll get this plastic part out of here so so it doesn't ruin the car. I got some new coolant hoses from JP Group. Um, they're available. For the longest time, these hoses were not available at all. And now JP Group makes new ones. They're made of rubber. You can buy fancier silicone ones, but these should be good enough. And they're affordable, and we're gonna replace them proactively so that the car doesn't explode. So we're trying to put LED headlights in here, but we, we're taking out these H4s, but there's some real weird stuff. Someone brazed or soldered on these tabs. So we're missing the outer headlight ring. These mount directly. And then there's just like, you know, wires tucked in here. And what is that? Oh, does this have daytime running lights? That must be what that is. That's crazy. There's a second bulb in here, Dan. This is strange. So uh, we've got Ben's Doka here and it's got, you know, proper tires and stuff on it. So we're gonna drive his and follow mine. He's gonna drive this one and we're gonna see just how smoky it really is. So take it for a spin. First gear is further to the left than you think it is. So if you, sometimes you gotta slam her into second to slam her into first. Okay. Just hit it hard. smells it really smells you can 
really smell. Oh yeah, that's the wrong gear. We'll just keep to this one. Yeah, he doesn't have a tack. A tack is nice. It is smoky, but like I can't. It's not a cloud of smoke. It's just some smoke coming out. It does smell. It smells a lot. It's time to make the truck look cooler with some giant tires and a lift kit. So we're adding some BF Goodrich uh, mud terrain tires on Go Westy 15 inch rims and a Go Westy zero lift spring kit. Uh, the zero lift springs on a lighter truck should lift it about an inch to an inch and a half as opposed to a Westy. So we're definitely gonna go up and it's gonna look cool. Let's do it. Let's add a bunch of Go Westy accessories to this and make it look cooler. Yeah. Vanagons came factory equipped with 14 inch wheels and generally some really small light truck tires. Uh, in this case, we're running some Bridgestone Blizzax, which are actually pretty good snow tires so far, but um, you know, we just wanna go make dumb, irresponsible choices. So adding, I don't know, a couple inches of additional meat, which is gonna profoundly affect the gearing and reduce the horsepower, but make the car look that much cooler and probably still get stuck in the mud? Well, I think that's the right thing to do. So we got these big, massively heavy tires that are gonna increase the rolling resistance and uh, really profoundly affect the ability to drive. And we mounted them to these Go Westy steel rims. Go Westy manufactures these steel rims to be the correct offset for a Vanagon. I like steel rims because they tend to be the most durable. And uh, well, we're gonna beat the crap out of this thing. Let's do it. I took some measurements and these tires are about three and a half inches bigger than the stock ones, which is significant. We're going to take some measurements around the chassis so we can see how much the overall vehicle goes up once we add the lift springs and the giant tires. Right around 12 and a half inches to the bottom of this jack point on the driver's side. This is the rear. Let's uh, get a couple of other measurements. Our front uh, fender lip to center cap is just about 17 inches, maybe just shy of it. And our rear suspension, driver's side, um, just shy of 17 as well. So it's very even. Must make it weird. This control arm should move very easily with my hand. And I probably needs upper control arm bushings because this is supposed to move really easily. I would describe that as not that shorter. So the front stuff, we've ran into some problems. The upper control arm does not move the way it should. Uh, it is bound up, the bolt doesn't spin the way it should, and to get the nut off, we're having issues. So we're gonna have to heat the nut, which is gonna destroy the upper control arm bushing. So we're gonna need upper control arm bushings, and we're gonna need to redo both sides. And that makes sense, that's fine. We can do that all at once, that's it's good. also about as loose a ball joint as I've ever seen. It moves very easily. Realize this popped right off way too easily, and that's because the speedo cable's like not attached in the back, so that's an issue. Um, we're putting the big wheels and tires on anyway because it feels irresponsible, and to do that, we have to convert this from lug bolts to lug studs, uh, as well as some fancy new nuts because it's a different profile. So we're gonna thread lock these little guys into there. And it'll be great. Yeah, I don't know what this is. This is like one of those Kong toys for a dog. You fill this with peanut butter. So we got these in using only the weight of our friends. And uh, I think we need to take these things out. So I don't remember. Is there supposed to be one there, but not two there? Oh, we got, there's some, uh, there's some extra paint marks on the other side of this car where we want to put the two wheel drive stickers. So what were your thoughts? I want to wet sand them down. So Let's like, not, we, we're not wet sanding and repainting this car today. Not, no, 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 we're not going to repaint it. We're just going to take the extra paint off down to the original paint. Okay. <laughs> we Carolina squatted a van again. Big tires on the front. Tiny tires on the back. Thing of beauty. So we got the springs in. You don't need a spring compressor, you just need a a body. And uh it's in there. One Kurt, a unit of Kurt. <laughs> Those are different springs. Yeah, this has yeah, these are different springs. Yeah, because the, yeah, this has these tight, yeah, 
thinner coils up here and this only has a single. These are different springs. Huh. Put one bolt in and that's holding it up. And then we just take our 5 16 drill bit and this is really easy to install. You just poke the holes like that. Just drill some holes in your car, you know? It's a good time. Oh yeah. Give it a little, uh, I love putting holes in cars. That's a good one. And then your bolt goes through here and you access the backside through all of the polished mud and you stick a nut in there. Screw it together. Just try not to lose the nut in the frame. Yeah, if I lose the nut in the frame, I'm worried. That's why I piled up some of that Polish mud on the sides. That's to hold it. Yeah. Did you really? No, I know where it is. It's in there. Yeah, it's just <laughs> not where I want it to be. Well, do you want me to get it? Let's take this out. It's... Oh, it's full of things. That's access to a pillar. Oh, is that a mouse? That might be a mouse. That's a bag. Why is there a bag in here? <laughs> it's cocaine. There's another bag. <laughs> this is where you store your bags. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> ah, this, is, this is like a weird magic trick. There's another bag. <laughs> No, well, there's a hole there. <laughs> Putting the Go Westy Edition sticker on here. This is a creative remake of the Wolfsburg Edition that would have come on some Vanigans. This is the right way to do this. You just heat this up until the bushing totally melts, and then you kind of can't go back, so... That seems to be broken. And, uh, oh yeah, it's definitely broken. And this seems way too tight, so that's probably wrong. I got the this out, and this is pretty much ruined, but... We'll put a new this on, we'll put a new that on. And we're going to maintain this piece of garden hose as a spacer because it seems correct. Someone did that on purpose, and I don't want to second guess that person's life choices. So let's put these big springs in with this broken this and that, and this broken this and that, and uh, we're going to maintain this piece of garden hose to maintain their life choices. These Go Westy Whiff springs are, uh, they're a lot taller than the stock ones, so it's a little tricky to get them in. But with the right compressor, it's not only relatively easy, it's, it's relatively safe. Uh, this is a compressor that I bought on Amazon a while back. I've had it for years. It's really paid off. It is expensive, but it is a very nice tool. I'll post a link. This makes it safe, or the safest it can be. I grew up with two different mechanics that both lost an eye to spring compressors. The cheap spring compressors are not safe. Um, this one is, is pretty good. I feel confident in it, and it makes this job pretty easy. So that. Hot tip. Toss a couple of wraps of electrical tape over this thing, attaching it to this thing so it doesn't do one of those while you put it up in there. It makes it go better. Do that. You'll be happy. Uh... Yeah, two halves is more halves. So I'm just cutting them off with a sawzall like that and then cutting some relief cuts and hitting it with a hammer. I think if I hit it with a hammer enough, it'll be fine. Let's hit it with a so hammer. We sawzawed the good bit off and then we made a couple of relief cuts. Now I figure it's just time for, well, big hammers. I threw a coat of paint on the upper control arm here, used the Rust-Oleum Professional Series, I like that stuff. And I put in these Go Westy upper control arm bushings. These are a really slick design that uh, are self-lubricating basically forever. They will completely eliminate the very annoying creaking sound going over everything. And unlike the previous ones, they'll actually work. This suspension's gonna be functional. These are a very good upgrade. That's the way it's supposed to work. Those new okay, go Okay, here's what we've got. We've got new tie rod ends. They're Phoebe Bilstein's. A new ball joint, upper ball joint, Phoebe Bilstein with the Go Westy uh, ball joint spacer, which should help uh, with alignment and stuff. We've got the Go Westy Zero Lift Springs. We're using the stock uh, shocks. I think they're sacks. I mangled the top. It'll be fine. Uh, we've got the Go Westy upper control arm bushings, um, so that moves nice and freely now. And we're going to leave the lower ball joint in place and reuse all of the probably ruined sway bar stuff. And we should be in pretty good shape. Let's put it back together. So I'm working on this side, and uh, I've never seen that before. That is a hex bolt in the upper ball joint, so that's wrong. Let's see if we can get it out. Got the turbo gauge added. You just tee into this line here. 
and it goes through this filter up to this little box which is wired all through the car up to there and in theory it will tell me that i have boost back at it for the day on the doka we're gonna put a european license plate on the front this one reads da 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 this is the license plate i had on my first bus that i bought in 2005 well not exactly that one got stolen in a in a grocery store parking lot. But my brother got this one made for me as a replacement years ago. And it's time to go on this bus. And taking the steering wheel off and stuff to change the lock cylinder. And there's some crazy crap back here. Let me show you. This wire is like a thousand percent melted. And it... <sighs> I gotta figure out what that goes. That's a real problem. That's a car burning problem. Uh, I don't like that. So we need to put this lock cylinder in here. And to do that, we gotta sort of line these up, figure out where the springy dude is and just kind of drill a hole, which is probably like Let's just start drilling holes. I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen? I don't know. That wasn't quite the right spot. I needed to be a little more there. But I think if I poke it, it'll work. Anyway, I uh, randomly drilled a large hole in there. I don't know what size it's supposed to be, but I went with that size. And you can too. So once you've got it moving, yep, there it is. Let's put the other one in. Back at it. So these wires up here, which are solid gray and gray and black, are all melted as is this connector. I got a buddy cutting me a pigtail, um, but these were melted together. So that could have something to do with some of the weird problems we've had. For now, I'm just separating them. I'm gonna put some liquid electrical tape around them and we're gonna run it, but hopefully we'll have a real solution real well, soon. Now it's back to work on the Doka here. Uh, where we left off, we'd added a turbo gauge, a boost gauge up there on the dash, so we could see that it was making the correct boost. And it does seem to be. It's making nine to 10 PSI when it's doing all the things it's supposed to do. That's too low. We can make some small modifications here so that we can add like twice as much boost. And twice as much boost means quite a lot more horsepower until the engine explodes. So, Worst case scenario, we would blow out the head gasket, but this engine already needs a head gasket, so I don't know. This right here is the Dehuset that's responsible for horsepower. There's a little valvey thing in there, and when it builds up too much horsepower pressures in there, it pushes this diaphragm out, and it releases those horsepower pressures into the air. Just turning that screw in all the way might not be enough. And we might have to modify things so that it doesn't work anymore, and then we can keep all of the horse gases inside of it. We lost some footage there, and at some point we switched from the old worn out shocks to some brand new Bilstein HDs. The reason for that was once the suspension worked properly, we found out that those shocks really were in bad shape. So we got some Bilstein HDs, not the XHDs, the regular HDs matched with the Go Westy Zero Lift Springs for this lighter Doka. It seems to be perfect. I'm a really big fan, so that's why that happened new shocks in it's hard to get them to align right so the thing to do is compress them while they're out here with the black thing on top of them and compress them using some of these stainless steel zip ties i'll put the link and then you get the whole thing up in there and then you cut the zip tie and you feed it out it works really well makes it very easy to Here's do just the overall view of it compressed okay i'm in the back door here of the doka rebuilding all this this was completely caked full of mud maybe this car has been inside of a lake that would add up how did they get mud in the lock anyway i cleaned it a lot lubricated it hopefully now the lock and mechanism will work because before that you couldn't lock the door and you couldn't get out if you were inside so it's not fair to the people in the back so now it will work in the corners of the bed there's these factory holes that are threaded for little things so we're gonna pop that plasticky dude out and make a new bolt so that we can put these bad boys in that way they'll vibrate all the time and i'll hear them it'll remind me of the jingle jangles of christmas the next thing we're gonna do is replace these mirrors these mirrors are legendarily horrible the stock Vanagon mirrors get loose at this joint, and when the wind blows on them or a small insect makes an impact upon them, 
that little ant, flying ant, one of those queen ants will just make it go bam, and then it's completely out of adjustment. It just takes one ant to do that. So these are garbage. We're gonna replace these with the truck mirrors or the LT mirrors. They're a modern remake of another vintage period correct VW truck that had different, better mirrors. They're way better. Huge visibility gains and a way cooler look, to be perfectly honest. Let's do it. The next thing we're going to do is replace these mirrors. These mirrors, the stock mirrors on a Vanagon, are legendarily garbage. The This joint wears out at the bottom, just preemptively, automatically, and it becomes so loose that the subtlest of impact from a small flying queen ant, just one of those spring ants, comes along and it just goes, bam, knocks it completely out of adjustment. You should see what a bee does. If it hits a bee or a grasshopper, I think the thing just explodes. Anyway, we're going to replace these with the LT mirrors. They're a modern remake of another period correct style mirror, bigger mirror, just it's a way better mirror. It's superior, way better visibility, everything's better. Let's put them on. I just noticed that at some point, someone apparently washed this window using only gravel and a rag vertically because holy crap, it is scratched to, I've never actually seen one. I, I would say this window's pretty much ruined. Well, we'll have to find another piece of glass. I love drilling holes in cars. Let's do it. Okay, I installed these. These are riv nuts. It's like a special rivet that gives you a nut. I've got a fancy tool for it. If you haven't seen how we do this, there's another video on just how we install truck mirrors on Vanigans but this is the right way to do it. Let's put it on. So here's the stance we've settled on. The Go Westy Springs raised it a little bit in the front and a little bit in the back, but we're gonna take some measurements to actually compare. We know the back isn't quite uh, where we want it yet. We'll have to shim it up a little more. Anyway, the uh, 215 75 15 mud terrain tires seem to fit with plenty of clearance everywhere. No modifications at all. This is a stock two wheel drive vehicle other than the springs. There's plenty of cle clearance at the rear, rear bleh. there's plenty of clearance at the rear trailing arms, plenty of clearance to the stock brakes. These Go Westy rims set the offset exactly right to make sure that you can put some giant meaty tires on a stock two wheel drive Vanagon. Um, yeah, they really improve the look. This is the stance it kind of settled out on. It definitely lifted it a little bit in the front and a little bit in the back. We'll get some measurements to be able to compare here soon. The back isn't quite where we want it yet. We'll have to lift it up a little more with some spacers because it's a little bit squatted right now, but that's probably because the factory spacers are either missing or made out of things they found. Anyway, the 215 75 15 BF Goodrich mud terrain tires fit on these 15 inch Go Westy seal rims with no modifications at all. There's plenty of clearance everywhere. We don't seem to be rubbing anywhere on the body. There's clearance at the trailing arms. There's clearance to the brakes. I'm really impressed with the, the offset that they settled upon with these steel rims. It works very well. This is a direct bolt-on, at least on this vehicle. We've added the truck mirrors, which make it look super cool. And these Go Westy rock sliders we added were really easy to put on, and they, they're a pretty cool accessory. Honestly, I'm probably gonna put these on all of my buses now because they can offer a lot of body protection. They're relatively affordable and they were really easy to install. If you notice, this is a straight line and the, the uh, previous owner managed to, well, they damaged the crap out of this car. Had they had the rock sliders, probably would have been fine. It looks like the combination of uh, lift springs and giant tires raised the car at least three inches total, which is pretty wild. Um, definitely could go up about an inch more in the back to get things nice and level. So we'll we'll deal with that next. These Go Westy rock sliders are a pretty cool accessory that I'm probably gonna add to a lot of my Vanigans. They offer a good deal of body protection and they're very easy to install. If you look at what the previous owner did, uh, well, that would have been prevented with some rock sliders. I love these truck mirrors. I add them to pretty much all my buses. I just think they give way better visibility, stability, and I like the look. Oh no, the 
mustache went away. I told you that could happen. <laughs>